what's happening? Where's the camera? See, it's been a long time since I've done a video. It's been a few weeks. There's the camera. Got my coffee. Do a coffee cheers in the morning. It is uh, Friday, November 3rd. How the hell are you? Welcome back from Malin land. I was listening to uh, some Pantera just before I turned this on because I started... <clears throat> I got Rex Brown's book, the bass player from Pantera, who was a Texas... A uh, um, heavy metal band from Texas from the late 80s, early, mid 90s. If you haven't heard of Pantera, look him up. I started reading his book last night, so now I'm in Pantera's world. And uh, currently, they've recorded their. F uh, they've recorded Great Southern Trend Kill, and things are starting to fall apart. It's a funny story because I remember. Uh, being a kid, just a teenager, like a early teens, hanging out in Ada, Oklahoma, and there was a, we were hanging out in a parking lot. That's what you did on the weekends in Ada, Oklahoma. You hung out in the parking lot with some other kids, and you tried to find an, a, an adult to buy you some beer, or you waited for a friend to get, you know, some, some party supplies or whatever and come pick us up. Maybe we'd meet a girl, maybe not, who knows. But there, was, there weren't really clubs for kids to go to, so you hung out in gas stations and parking lots. You drove around, you walked around, rode your bike around. And uh, one night, someone pulled up in this truck, like a stepside black, stepside Chevy truck, old 80s model. And they were playing this music that was super loud and super heavy. We had never heard anything so heavy. And me and some other kids I was with ran up to the truck and we were like, what are you listening to? They said, it's this brand new band that we just heard about called Pantera. They're from Dallas, Texas. And my head exploded. I was like, we just listened. We stuck our heads in the truck and listened to it. They had it as loud as it would go. And I remember thinking, Dallas is close. I know where Dallas is. I could... You know, you could drive from Ada to Dallas in about three and a half hours. The other bands that I listened to, you know, Metallica, these were these were West Coast bands. Um, Motley Crue, you know, all that stuff. All that band, all those bands came from California or bands were coming out of New York. And that was unattainable for me at the time. I couldn't imagine ever even visiting those places. But Dallas, Texas was just, it was the next state over. So I remember it lodging in my head like Dallas, Texas. I could hitchhike there and probably meet these guys. And what's funny is, let's say I was 15, maybe 16 when that happened, when I heard that album, maybe 14 or 15 or 16, I can't quite remember. But within three or four years, I was living in Dallas. And within four or five years, I was hanging out with Pantera on a regular basis. They were the biggest band in Dallas. The guys that I played with, we started playing shows, and I ended up meeting... Um, a lot of loc a lot of the big rock station DJs there in town in Dallas, the biggest rock station on the air. We all became friends, and they were friends with Pantera, and so it all kind of mixed in together where I spent several nights partying with uh, the Abbott brothers, Daryl and um, Vinny. Never really saw Philip or uh, Rex around too much. and In the book, he talks about it. He's like, yeah, the, the Abbott brothers... Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl, they wanted to be out partying. They lo loved being famous and all that stuff. But Phil and Rex really didn't. They just wanted to kind of hide out, you know, get loaded and make music. And it made sense when I looked back. I was like, yeah, you never saw the, the bass player, the singer. It was just the drummer and the guitarist everywhere. You'd walk at a bar. Vinnie Paul sitting on the bar with his cowboy boots on the bar, wearing a cowboy hat, just holding court, man. He owned the place. Girls, guys, everyone gathered around while he's just holding court. And then we had a night where we played at their club. Uh, I believe they were part owners of the club. It was called Mongo's. And it was in Arlington. And during our set, uh, Pantera walked in. The, the, the drummer and the bass player walked in. And we got excited and nervous, you know. And they ended up, Pantera, the guys from Pantera destroyed a pool table. I believe it was their club. Don't quote me on that, but I think they co-owned it. But during our set, they ripped the, you know, those big box lights that hang over... Uh, pool tables they ended up just pulling it down onto the pool table and, and breaking their pool cues and smashing the balls and 
it was chaos. It was crazy. Got to talk to Diamond Dimebag Daryl and the see. I almost called him Diamond Daryl because that's what he was in the beginning. He was he was Daryl. Then he was Diamond Daryl. Then when they got heavier, he was Dimebag Daryl. It was funny. And Rex was Rex Rocker when they were a glam band, and then he switched to just Rex Brown. You know. But yeah, we got to see him that night. I got to talk to Dime, Dimebag Daryl in the bathroom for a while. He had like a blue, maybe a red goatee back when he was doing that. And we just shot the shit for a minute or two while we were peeing in the urinals and laughing. He said we, he said we were good. He said you guys, you know, could do a lot of good things. And he kind of gave me a couple of tips, you know, but I forget what they were. You know, he said, your guitar player is really good. Your voice is good. Talk less between songs. Because I had been ranting. I was wasted. I was probably 18. And I was ranting in between songs. We'd play a song, you know, let's say it's four minutes long. Then I would talk for four minutes about de- how depressed I was <laughs> and how terrible my life was. And I would take my, I took my shoes off during that show and my socks and my shirt. And the whole band was like, what's wrong with this guy? I was wasted. But I remember he said something like, talk less between the songs. Just, just, just play the songs. I was like, you got it. But that was my running with him. But it was, it's interesting to go back and read the book now because, uh, I'm seeing all the stuff that they went through, you know, the transition that they went through. And that was a weird time to be in a band, like the late 80s, early 90s, because everything changed. Music completely changed in 1992. So if you were in a glam band in 1990, when Nirvana came, you were now in probably in a, not a glam band anymore. It, glam bands went from playing stadiums and theaters to clubs and nowhere. No one wanted to see it. No one wanted to pay for it. So everyone switched. And so a lot of bands, Pantera, Alice in Chains, I heard this about too. They were basically glam bands before they changed, before they morphed into grunge and uh, heavier bands. But it was a weird time period because even the local bands in Dallas when I moved there were transitioning. They had all been long-haired spandex-wearing rock bands. And now they had on flannel shirts and combat boots and shaved heads and tattoos. It was a weird time. So you'd hear a band's first album and be straight up glam rock, <clears throat> myself included. Uh, when I was thir- 14 to about 16, I was in glam bands, like Poison cover bands, stuff like that. And then by the time I was 18, I was I had lost my mind. I was out of control. I had heard Jane's Addiction, Faith No More, and then Nirvana and Soundgarden, and, and I just switched my ways. But it's a blast. I read about half the book yesterday. I, when I fall into a book, man, I just fall in. And my favorite kind of books right now, you guys, uh, you've heard me say, I read a lot of self-help books over the last nine years. And that's, they've been a big help, I believe. And then I switched to business books for the last two years when I wanted to get like more business-like. And I'm glad I did because I learned some things about investing. I learned some things about uh, business and productivity. I learned some things about um, hiring people, which I never actually did. Uh, Just once I did that. But I learned a lot of cool stuff, and I I just like reading books. But for me, what I've discovered this year is that the rock and roll autobiographies are where it's at. These are some of the most amazing stories ever told. And if you guys look back through my videos, you can see I switched gears. I was talking about self-help and productivity or whatever, and then it was like all I'm talking about is Rolling Stones Skid Row, you know, and all this stuff. Gene Simmons, Kiss, all these. Now I'm talking about Pantera. You're like, what is this guy talking about? But I'm just on my journey, man. I'm doing my thing. And that's what part of this YouTube channel is. And I've taken some time off of the channel, as you know. And I've been thinking about what is, what are the good things about having a YouTube channel? And what are the bad things? Pros and cons, basically. And I've waited to, to do any videos, and I'm continually reevaluating what this is. But at the end of the day, what it really has always been, here's the secret I'll let you guys in on. The reason why you've met me here is because I am documenting my days. I'm documenting the way I look. This is the coolest thing. I'm documenting my haircuts. As you can see, I just shaved my head. I'm documenting my physical uh, appearance. You know, physically, like from the the working out and the weightlifting and stuff. I get to go back and I have a record that goes back for years now. And I can see, if I see a picture of myself, I go, man, I was really uh, lean. I was really ripped at that point. What date was that photo from? Okay, September 3rd, 2015. I can go into my fitness pal and find out exactly what I weighed that day. 
And then I can go on YouTube and look at the video if I shot one that day or at least around that time and see what I looked like. And it's almost like a little snapshot in today's, like, like I'm doing here. I'm just turning on the camera, telling you what I'm doing. And you guys seem to like it. And I love being able to go back through it. Some of the videos I'm not so, are not so great to see. Like some of them I caught myself. I was trying to be a YouTuber. And I don't really like those videos so much. And then there was a period where I was trying to read my blog posts. I literally, I had a camera up, I mean a laptop up here. And I was reading off of the screen and trying to not look at the screen. I'm like trying to look here, but look here and, and read. And those are the worst videos that I have. I'm probably going to hide them. I'm not going to tell you which ones, but there's some pretty damn popular ones. But yeah, I started thinking like the coolest thing about this is, well, there's a couple of really cool things. I get to meet all you guys. I've met some cool people through here. I guarantee you I've probably helped dozens, hundreds of people, who knows how many. I get emails all the time from people saying just watching your videos is cool. It's nice to hear someone say that they've gone through a bunch of crap in their life and now they're doing well. And some people lean heavily into They just want affiliate marketing tips and tricks. And there's plenty of YouTube channels that will give you that if that's what you're into. And then some people, they, they only want to hear about uh, depression. They want help with their depression or whatever. And then some people just want to hear stories. Some people just like to tune in. Some people have said they just put on my voice. They put on the videos at night. You might try this. Just do the whole playlist. Start from today and just hit play. And if my voice is uh, helpful for you, to, it's helping them sleep. And I do the same thing for years. I've been putting on the Church of What's Happening Now podcast on my phone and putting it on the bed beside me. And I listen to Joey Diaz talk. And um, his voice is kind of hypnotic. And it's been, it works every time. Joe Rogan's podcast is good for that too, just because they're long. They talk for three hours. So you have three hours of continuous background noise to sleep to. But for some reason, Joey Diaz's voice puts me down just like a baby. It's magic. Uh, it's hypnotic. And then Joe Rogan's as well. On, um, on the church, what's happening now, the only hard part is Lee Syatt has a really high voice and Joey Diaz has a really low gravelly voice, which is the perfect dynamic for a podcast. That's what you want. But as, as a sleep utility, when Joey's talking, you go into like a hypnosis. And then when Lee starts giggling and laughing, it's so high, it wakes you up. And then Joey will bring you back down. Then Lee will laugh and you... And, it's hilarious. But I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. So if you want podcast recommendations, check this out. Um, these are the, really the only podcasts I listen to right now are Church of What's Happening Now with Joey Diaz, Lee Syatt, The Joe Rogan Experience. And there's one other one that I just found called Enough. And it's with a guy named Patrick Roan, and it's on iTunes. Now, they haven't done an episode in about three or four years. It ended. But someone... Luckily, thankfully, was able to scrape most of the episodes and set up an archive. This is a podcast I found, <clears throat> well, th four or five years ago. They were still doing it live when I found it. And another reason I listened to Patrick Rohn is he has a deep hypnotic voice and it would put me to sleep. Plus, he was the owner and the operator of a site called minimalmac.com, which I stumbled upon when I was getting into minimalism originally, like back in 2000. 13, 2012, I stumbled upon this site, minimalmac.com, and it was the most beautiful Mac minimalism mixture of stuff that I'd ever seen. Everything from computer setups to desks to applications to just he would write words, simple little things about life and minimalism. He, he released a few books through that uh, site, made t-shirts. It was really a cool site. It doesn't update it anymore. He moved on to other things. and uh, But the podcast is great. It still exists. So if you're on iTunes, get on there and look for Enough. You might have to put Patrick Rohn, R-H-O-N-E. Really cool. Uh, he's a good guy. There's about a 100 episodes or so you can you can live with, and they're fun to go back and listen to. But anyway, that's what I've been up to, man. We're 14 minutes in. It's Friday. I don't even know what I'm going to do today. I literally just woke up. Turned this on. I was going to do a live Instagram stream, but I ended up doing this instead. I said, let me do a YouTube stream instead. 
And if you're not if you're not following me on Instagram, I have some new profiles for my affiliate marketing forum, Mad Society, and they're all Mad Society Net. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram slash Mad Society Net. You can find me there. And I've been doing a lot of stuff on Instagram, on my personal account, and on Mad Society. So um, if you're not there already, go to Mad Society Net on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find me there. There's cool stuff, uh, inspirational posts, marketing stuff, ideas. All that's good time. So anyway, that's it. Almost out of coffee, so a good time to close. Have a great day. Post the comments. Let me know what you're up to. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all whatever that is. Coffee cheers on the way out. And as always, I will see you in the future.